try to remember always to stay behind me. If you go in any way ahead of me, if I ask you to draw one line, let's say for example, one short line like that, just do that. Don't do more, because if you do that, plus you do that, then all I can do in order to try and teach you is to say, oh, you shouldn't have done that. Now the next thing that we're going to do will be A, B, and C. Okay, now here what we're going to do. We're going to try and draw uh, a little bit of light shape. So I'm going to start with a circle. I'll draw it as carefully as I can because of my wobbly, wobbly line. Okay, now look at the line is one line. If your hand's shaking, that's fine. The shakiest artist I've ever seen was Gustav Klimt. And uh, yeah, his drawings, I think his hands shook so much because of his beautiful models. But that's, that's beside the point. So we draw the line and we try to draw it in one line. If for some reason you should break the line, then you can't do something like that. You can't hack at it. Okay. So you've got to come very, 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 very carefully and join the line there like an invisible mender, like a tailor, and try to rejoin at the other end of the line. So that when you look at the line, it's an absolute, perfect, complete thing. All right. Now, this is supposed to be uh, a perfect circle, a perfect uh, sphere, like a, a billiard ball or table tennis ball or something like that. And now we're going to imagine that there's light coming from this direction. See, like that. And this light will light half of the ball, and half of the ball will be in shadow. Something like that. Something like that. So, stay with me, then draw the first circle, and once you've drawn the second circle, and work on the circle until it's perfectly round. But you can work with shorter lines, especially if you work with charcoal. You can, um, I'll do it here. You can work on the line. Charcoal's a little bit easier sometimes. And if it's not round enough, for example there, then wipe it down a little bit and draw it again. And then you can draw short bits of line if you really, really, really have to, but it's better never to draw short bits of line. Always try to draw the line as long as possible and with as much control as possible. Like that. And like that. And I think I'm going to have a nice mistake at the bottom, which is great because then I can correct that mistake. See, there's a point forming there. There's a point there, if you look very closely, you'll see that the line, there is no invisible mending there, there's a gap. Let's say if I fold this shape here with water, then there must be no way for the water to escape. So now, because it's charcoal, I can just do that. I can rub it back gently. But now I have to pick up again that line perfectly. Perfect mending. And join it with this one perfectly. Now that's beginning to be quite a nice circular shape. And if you have a putty rubber, putty rubber is very handy in, in charcoal drawing. It's, no, it's not much use in pencil drawing, but in charcoal drawing it's very, very good. Right, so we go there. Once you've done that, do me a favor and send me a photograph of your drawing at this stage. And also at this stage. Then just pause the video for a moment and get this far. So we know that the light's coming from there. Okay. So we pause the video for a moment. And because the light's there and the stable tennis ball or billiard ball is on a tabletop, then it'll cast a shadow. The shadow will be quite long in this direction and it'll be an oval. And it'll be oval here. So it'll be a little bit of shadow there. And then the shadow, Ooh, bad drawing, bad drawing. Never worry about bad drawing. Worry more about continuous line, line that, that joins with itself. OK, 
Okay, that's more what we want to do. To draw sensitive, ooh, it's very insensitive, but it doesn't matter. And come around there, rub that away, and draw that. Now, if you have a putty rubber, then, then use it, okay? Because it's gonna, in fact, in this drawing, we're going to need putty rubber work because we're going to draw light and shade. Okay, so we come like that. There's the cast shadow. Like that. The longest point of the... Uh, yeah, there we go. And then here it's not nice and round enough. That's better. That's much better. Okay. But now we're going to look at lost and found edges. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start shading this entire shape. The light will come like that and if you look at the line parallel to the light source, then more or less there will be where that shadow ends and the light source oh, more or less there will be that where that shadow ends. But this is all, um, what should we say? This is all just play. Now what's going to happen is that where the shadow meets other shadows, they will have a lost edge. And I'm looking for that lost edge. So I want to take out that line. Where shadow meets shadow, the edge will be lost. And then this is going to look like that. And you can go onto this and the restart. You can start putting in the shading like that. Better to go over the lines than to stop short of the lines. Because if you stop short of the lines, a nasty little thing happens, and that is that you have a white, a white uh, spot in your shading. Like this, you can get your shading very, very, very even. It's not even enough, really. There, get some more even there, more even there. We darken a little bit this way. Always go a fraction over the line. Just a millimeter, maybe two millimeters over the line. Okay, now we're starting to get edges. Yeah. Uh, there's a funny little spot there that I don't want me to go over the lines. And then you can actually use your putty rubber if you want to. Normally you don't want to because the going over the edges gives atmosphere. So you don't really want to get rid of that atmosphere. It's actually very, very, very nice. But here on the um, on what's called the ridge of the shadow here, you want to go over the line a little bit more on purpose because you want to get the feeling of the ball curving away from you so that's nice now um, I'm going to make this drawing a little bit more complicated by putting in the edge of a table edge of a tabletop something like that now that will be white and this section to the top will be shadow or dark Dark is a better word than shadow, or better word than black, it will be dark. Ah, I made a mess. I made a mess. Okay, doesn't matter. My mess won't be so critical. Alright, now we have another thing. Where this white bit here meets the white bit of the tabletop, we will have a completely lost edge there that edge will be gone. And if that had been white, this whole edge would have been gone, but I don't really want that to be gone. So, now we're going to start shading this section as well, because that's also shadow. Also going over the line. And like that. And like that. I'm working... I don't want to say I'm working roughly. No, it's not rough. It's extremely delicate, and it's as delicate as I can make it. And there I want a beautiful loss of line. As delicate as I can make it, and that is not very delicate, but I'm doing my best. And that's what we always have to do. You can dab with your fingertip, little spots that go too dark, you can dab them just back with your fingertip a little bit. Okay, now there, that should be a lost edge. The edge... The actual edge will now be there, there, and there. And this bit will be lost. So we get it like that. So we can put more tone in here. 
But this is just more being playful. We don't need that. We need a nice clean white shape and a nice clean shadow shape. And that's all that we need. Now I'll go back to the, the pencil drawing. But before I do that, I'm going to mark a couple of very important points in this ball of ours. Okay. The first important point here is that there's a very clean edge where the light meets the shadow. Knife edge. Very clean. Knife edge. And there will be a very clean edge where the shadow is in front of the white tabletop. Knife edge. And again here, also a knife edge. Knife edge is a knife hard edge. It's an edge that can be very hard there and very soft there when it gets further away from the light source. So if you look at the real shadow, it blurs a little bit more as it gets away from the start of the shadow, from the from the heart of the shadow, the edge of the shadow, the hard edge of the shadow. So there. Then there's another edge here, which is very beautiful, is this edge here. That is a soft edge. That is where it goes around like that, like a baby's bottom, something like that. And then we've got a couple of completely lost edges. I must rub that out to make it more lost, because there must be no edge here. That's the lost edge. And that also, there is also a lost edge. So I'm just going to write them down with an L. I'll write lost here. And here is a little bit small, so I'll just write the L there for the lost edge. And here's a lost edge here. Lost, a lost edge. Then we have one more, do we? Yeah. Now we have four, knife edge, Hard edge, soft edge, and lost edge. Okay, those four edges. And everything that we draw or see will have something of this nature. So I'm going to go back to the pencil for this other one. And we'll do what we did there. We'll draw in the shadow. And now I'll use the broken kind of line, which I sort of discourage you from using. But you can use it under the right circumstances. And when you're trying to explore, when you're trying to draw structure, those are the right circumstances. I want this to be a little bit longer there. Okay, like that. Now, we know that this is going to be a lost edge. So we rub it out. And we know that this is going to be a soft edge, so we soften it a little bit. But now in this case, we're not going to put a dark space, a tabletop there. We're just going to have white behind there. So here's the shadow. Shade, shadow. The cast shadow with a hard edge on it. And then it will go, we work through the lost edge into the ball. And all the way through into the soft edge around the curve of the ball. This is the soft edge with the curve around the ball. And then we have a hard edge, not a hard edge, a very hard edge here. A knife edge here, and we'll have a knife edge there. And this down there will only be a soft edge. Uh, sorry, this will only be a hard edge, not as hard as a knife edge. I'll mark them up a little bit more. So this edge will still remain visible up to round about there and round about there against the white background. But round about here, the white of the billiard ball, or the white of the table tennis ball, will disappear. And a table tennis ball or billiard ball will now look like that. You could, if you're feeling creative, add a little bit. But that's 15 minutes, and I can only do 15 minutes videos. So there.